Streaming worldwide, this is the Gospel America Television Network. The Bible says the Word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword. And when the devil shows up, it's time to fight. Fight with the Word of God and the power of the Holy Ghost. Welcome to The Sword, sharing topics in the news with a Christian point of view. And now, let's join our host. Hey everybody, welcome to The Sword, where we take God's Word and put it on the situation at hand. Mm -hmm. I'm Gary Jenkins. And I'm John Pope, and, and I'm Galilee Missionary Baptist Church. And I'm from Eagles Wings International Ministries, and we're here to just join forces. And let's talk about what's happening in the spiritual realm as we lead to an apocalyptic season. Amen, amen. You know, I think one of the reasons that this is important is because in Matthew 16, Jesus tells us that we need to be able to discern the times. Mm -hmm. I mean, he got after the Pharisees because they couldn't discern the times. Right, right. So when we talk about this apocalyptic time, I think it's important that we identify what, what is it that we're talking about? Um, we can look at this one or two ways. Mm -hmm. From the standpoint of the uh, definition of apocalypse, you know, we talk about some type of catastrophic event or series of events that's going to bring about the end of all things. But then when we look at the Bible and we look at the word apocalyptos in, um, in apocalypsis in Greek and we look at the book of Revelation, that really talks about an uncovering, uh, a revelation. So what has God done? Jesus says, you need to discern the times. And then he, God says, I'm gonna tell you what the times are gonna be like. Mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of interesting. Hey. Well, it, it is interesting. And what I, what I love about the book of Revelation in particular, a lot of people don't like to talk about Revelation. It's not a big book to be scared of. Right. It's a book to that reveal, that's why it's called Revelation. Yes. It's revealing that which is hidden to the natural mm -hmm. and opening and showing to those who have spiritual sight. Mm -hmm. And that's why, again, it says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says unto the church. Right. See, right, right now, uh, Pastor Pope, the Spirit is speaking to the church. Mm -hmm. And is, it is absolutely essential that we who are born again mm -hmm. learn to walk in the Spirit and not after the flesh because mm -hmm. the Spirit is showing you through the book of Revelation. And by the way, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. Of Jesus Christ. Not yeah. the revelation of John. Right. It's right. the revelation of Jesus right. Christ right. given to John. Right. Now, now that we got that understood, what Jesus is showing us through what he commanded John to write, mm -hmm. he said, the things that you see and hear, write. And so he did on the Isle of Patmos. Mm -hmm. And in this writing, Oh, glory. I'm just feeling it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just got a joke just now <laughs> from the Holy Ghost. In this writing, he is revealing past, present, and future. Mm -hmm. Right. And so while you're talking about bringing in this, the topic of the uh, apocalyptic times, that's our present and future. Mm -hmm. Right. People don't think it's present. They think it's just future. Right. It's mm -hmm. present, too. Right. So what are your thoughts on that? So it, it is present because when we look around and we look at everything that's going on in the world, right? Mm -hmm. We look at um, when Jesus talked about wars and rumors of wars. We've had wars for a long time. I mean, that's, 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 that's nothing new. But we, we have this kind of uptick mm -hmm. in where people... Um, I have mine and, and I want yours to be mine too, you know. Oh, okay. So everybody's trying to take over stuff from, from, from other people. Mm -hmm. We have the issue of famine. We have the issue with changing weather patterns. We have a, a lot of things that are going on um, when we think about all of the uh, earthquakes Right here in San Angelo. Yeah, really? We just had one recently. San, San Angelo. Um, 
there are things that are going on in this world that it's worth taking note of mm -hmm. so that we don't fall into the same vein that the Pharisees fell into when Jesus told them that they were not able to discern the times. I'd like to, I'd like to just from a historical perspective, just take a quick look at some turning points in, in history. Okay. And one of the turning points we see is when we go back to the book of Genesis and we read in the book of Genesis chapter six, where um, God had basically gotten fed up with mankind and God sent the great flood. Mm. There was a time of, of, of marrying and people giving in marriage. There, people were just having a good time, but wickedness, God saw the wickedness of man mm -hmm. and how the wickedness of man had taken over. Mm -hmm. And because of the wickedness of man, God decided that he was gonna destroy the, the, the earth by the flood. And he left Noah and his family and to, to start some things over. Key thing, although there was a general reference to the time it was going to happen, mm -hmm. nobody knew exactly when that was going to happen. Second big event, the coming of Jesus, the coming okay. of the Messiah, right? Mm -hmm. It was prophesied in the Old Testament. I mean, you can look in the book of Isaiah, you can look in the book of Matthew, you can look back in the book of Genesis. We can look in a number of different places about the prophecies of the coming of the Messiah. The people knew it was coming. They just didn't know when it was coming. Right. When we go over into Matthew chapter 24 and, and Jesus is talking about how the temple is going to be destroyed, we know that that actually happened but the ultimate fulfillment of the destruction of all things has not occurred yet we know it's going to happen mm -hmm. we just don't know when it's going to happen you don't know in fact the bible says that no man knows the day or the hour you're talking about the the second coming of jesus christ yep he says uh, you know don't run over here because they say hey come over here That's don't right. run over there no man knows the day or the hour and what really gets me is I see these people on, on TV and they tr call themselves trying to predict when, when yes. Jesus is coming. Yes. And they yes. actually set dates. Remember? Yes. <laughs> Back in 2000. Yes. And we had the Y2K issue. Yes. Yes. And before Y2K kicked in over 2000, everybody said, see, that's the end of the computers. It's yep. going, the whole world's going to blow yep. up. And, yep. and then yep. they're saying, Jesus is coming yep. soon. Yep. Well, he is coming, folks. But he is we coming. don't know the day or the hour. Right. No man knows but the Father. Right. And if anybody walks around saying they know, then uh, uh, run. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Let me, let me um, just share a couple things with you. If we take Matthew 24, now we, we, we can't get into everything apocalyptic because there's just so, so many, much. so much that <laughs> is there. But Matthew 24, uh, if you look at the individual scriptures, uh, you can kind of group them. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the grouping, if you look at <coughs> verses 4 and 5, um, one of the things that Jesus talks about is that there will be false Christ. Yeah. How, many, how many times have there been people who wanted to pretend to be Jesus or God-like in nature mm -hmm. and lead people astray? If you look at verse 6, it talks about the wars that are that will happen. Mm -hmm. I mean, we see that we see that stuff going on right now. Verse seven, we look at the famines that are happening. United States is blessed tremendously. Tremendously, we we are tremendously blessed. Yes, but there are a number of places in the world that are not as as blessed as we are. We have death. Um, and I tell you, it scared people to death <laughs> uh, just a few years ago. Oh, yeah, the you tornado? You know, when, not just the tornado, but when we were dealing with the pandemic. Oh, yes. I mean, people were, people were dying all over the place. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are, these are things that are predicted. We have people where they're going to be um, martyrs. Mm -hmm. We have worldwide chaos. 
uh, if we look in verses 10 through 13. All of these things we see as pointing to, pointing to the, the, the end of the age. Mm -hmm. And all of these things are not only predictors of the present, but like you said, of the future. Because when you shift over to Revelation chapter 6, um, we got the white horse, we got the red horse, we got the black horse, we got the pale horse. Mm -hmm. All of those are symbols. When you read Revelation 6, now you have to read, you have to read Revelation 6 to understand because we're not going to try to get into everything here. We don't have that kind of no, time, no. right? I wish we did. Yeah. <laughs> but when we talk about the riders on the, the white horse, we're talking about those false Christ. The red horse, we're talking about war. When we talk about the black horse, we're talking about famine. When we talk about the pale horse, we're talking about death. Um, we even have in there martyrs under the altar in, in verses 9 through 11. And then we have worldwide chaos in verses 12 through 17. And then you have to remember also in the book of Revelation, it talks about the seals. It talks about the seals. And who is worthy mm -hmm. to, open, to seal. open the seals? None other than Jesus, the, la the yeah, slain yeah. lamb. Not just the, la the lamb, the slain the lamb, lamb of God. Of God. And, uh, so, uh, and as each seal is opened, mm -hmm. there is an apocalyptic... Mm -hmm. Event, event that takes place. Yes, yes. As foretold. Yes, as foretold. Yes, all of these things are, all of these things are part of that revelation, mm -hmm. right? Part of that 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 revealing, that apocalypsis, that God is giving us information. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> it's not just knowing uh, that these things are going to occur. But there are some other things that we as the church need to be aware of because what Jesus does in chapters two and three mm -hmm. of the book of Revelation, he gives a warning or identifies some problems with seven churches that were in, in Asia, right? Mm -hmm. He talks about the, the, the church that was just had a half-hearted commitment to the Lord. Um, they were only partially committed to witnessing for God. They were only partially committed to being obedient or, or studying uh, the word of God, only partially committed in their, in their prayer and their worship. Mm -hmm. He talked about the loveless church. You know, the church that, had, that at once, one time man was on fire, mm -hmm. had a love, a zeal for the Lord. And now, you know, it seems like they walked away from their first love. They walked away. He from actually their first says love. that. You have, yeah. You have left your first love. You've left your first love. And then there's a, there's a, there's a church that's a dead church, the one that's <laughs> dying spiritually. Um, how many times have we seen people that we say, you know, they look good. Mm -hmm. You know, they sound good. But the Bible says that they have a form of godliness, uh -oh. Uh -oh. but uh, deny, deny the, the power power thereof. And then there was the corrupt church where they wanted to mix the world mm -hmm. and holiness. Uh -oh. They want to mix the world and, and mm -hmm. godliness. And then we have, and this is one I kind of like because we always have to be aware of this the lukewarm church oh, okay. you know um, that church that was lukewarm there were people who were spiritually sick coming to the church mm -hmm. but they didn't have anything to offer them mm -hmm. they, did, they, they didn't have anything to offer the spiritually weary mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't um, take a stand for anything you know, it's tough when the church gets idle and only stands on yesterday's blessings. Okay. Yesterday's victories. Yesterday's well, victories. That's yeah. dangerous. It's very dangerous. That's very dangerous. And that's how you become lukewarm. <coughs> yes. And uh, Jesus said, 
if you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's a horrible predicament for a church to be in. Mm -hmm. And uh, either I would that you'd either be hot or mm -hmm. cold. Yes. But don't be lukewarm. Yes, yes. So. You know, and it's, I, I think it's interesting because I, I, I want to caution our audience not to think of when we say the churches, don't start naming churches. Don't start naming <laughs> buildings, right? Don't start naming buildings. Don't, don't do that. Oh, Eagles Wings or yeah. Galilee. Yeah, don't, 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 don't start doing that. No. Let's start looking at ourselves because we are the church. And this is uh, an, an indictment against churches in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, it, it's not a denominational thing. Right. It's, it's, it's about whether or not the church is walking in line with, with the edicts of God. Exactly. Exactly. And it's, uh, as Judge Judy says, it's a yes or no question. <laughs> 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 or yes or no answer. Uh, don't try to explain it. Exactly. You, you know, if you know the word, and the word says, "Thou shalt not steal, thou shalt right. not lie, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor." Mm -hmm. Whatever you're trying to, you're dealing with, you already know what the word says. And and I, I think you hit on a, a, a very important point because we have to ask ourselves in reality, how do we get to this point? to where we start identifying with the characteristics of these churches that Jesus says, yet I have this against you. <laughs> how, 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 how do we get to this point? Let me, let me throw out this sentence and you take this and run with it. Mankind has become very careless about our spiritual nature. We've become very careless, and because we have become careless about our spiritual nature, we have been blinded to the things of righteousness. We have been blinded to the things of righteousness. This is what I mean by this. The Bible gives us a series of instructions, all kinds of instructions, right? If we were to look in Matthew chapter 25, and we look at verses 14 through 30. You read that passage and what you see in that passage is Jesus is talking about people who had been given talents, who had been given gifts, who had been given a certain right. amount of money. Right. And they were to there was an expectation that they were going to take care of their master's money. Mm -hmm. There was an, an expectation that they were going to to grow that money. For two of the three people that had received that money, that, those talents, they were successful in growing that money. But for the third one, he was very unsuccessful in growing that money for two reasons. One, laziness. Two, fear. Mm -hmm. I wonder if the church has succumbed to the spirit of laziness and the spirit of fear. I believe it has. And I believe there are many people in churches across the nation that have fallen victim to fear, mm -hmm. to doubt, mm -hmm. to unbelief, mm -hmm. and last but not least, laziness. Right. Now, you can say what you want to say, but there, there are different organizations out there that will knock on doors. You probably know who I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And, uh, and they present their literature, and they're out there in the community witnessing what they believe. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Whether you agree with that or not, mm -hmm. the principle of the fact that they got out and mm -hmm. did something. Mm -hmm. There are people that are working in hospitals, mm -hmm. uh, people working in jails mm -hmm. and in prisons. Because you got to remember, uh, when Jesus separates the sheep from the goats, mm -hmm. he puts the sheep on the right hand mm -hmm. and he puts the goats on the left. Mm -hmm. And he, he says to the, to the goats, I was hungry. Yeah. And you didn't feed me. Right. I was sick. Mm -hmm. And you didn't visit me. Mm -hmm. I was in prison. You mm -hmm. didn't visit me. And the goats are going to say, well, Lord, when were you? Yeah, exactly. You know? And they're going to say, 
And as much as you didn't do it to the least of these, you, did, you didn't do it to me. Right. And to the sheep, he's going to say, the ones that are not lazy, the mm -hmm. ones that are not ashamed to go out and witness and tell others about the goodness of God. That's mm -hmm. why we have this program. Right, right, right. You know, right. We literally have millions of people watching this. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, <clears throat> the sheep went out and they told people about the goodness of the Lord. Mm -hmm. They witnessed to them, invited them to come to Christ, to turn their lives over to Christ. They went to the hospitals, visited the sick, went to the prisons, mm -hmm. visited those in prison. Mm -hmm. And they're going to say, well, Lord, when were you sick or in prison? Right. When were you hungry or right. naked? Mm -hmm. And as much as you did it to the least of these. See, we're so busy looking for God. Mm -hmm. We're looking for angels and we're looking for, you know, <laughs> some supernatural <laughs> manifestation. Come on, somebody. And we're looking for the supernatural manifestation of God. And you haven't done a thing that deserves that to happen. See, here's, here's the thing. When we lock in on <laughs> that spirit of fear that spirit of laziness we really start locking in on our ability and what our perceived inabilities are because we you know we, we we put god to the side and because we do that we are no longer taking care of god's business mm -hmm. we're no longer executing god's plan and now we run the risk of falling into that same situation that the seven churches in Asia did mm -hmm. of falling into that spirit of complacency, right? Mm -hmm. Of getting to the p place where Jesus says, I have this against you. Mm -hmm. But it's not just the spirit of laziness and fear because um, a lot of people like to read that uh, story, that parable, and they want to talk about how much each person got. It's not about how much you got. Mm -hmm. It's about what you did with what you got. Did you do anything with it? And so it doesn't matter if you have a handful mm -hmm. or what if you have you, an armful. What did you do with it? What did you do with it? That's what God wants to know. So what did you do with he it? He said in his word that he gave some 30, some 60, and some 100 fold. Uh, yep. Now, now, why is that? It seems like from a carnal thing, a carnal point of view, you would say, Oh God, that ain't fair. Mm -hmm. You right. know, right. Uh, you said you love all of us mm -hmm. equally. Yeah. You know, yeah. so why are you giving John Pope a hundred percent and you giving Gary sixty percent? Mm -hmm. Right. You know, it's not about it. It's according to your several ability. Mm -hmm. Yep. God said, in His Word. See, the, people don't realize this. Even if you're not lazy, even mm -hmm. if you don't, there are people that just don't know how to master a certain thing. Yep. And there are others who do. Yep. And he's talking about the liberal, uh, he's according to their ability. According to their ability. Okay. I'm not a mathematician. Right. So I'm not, you know, I, I, that's not my ability. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing good if I can add a two and two is four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Uh, but when it comes to understanding microwave energy, mm -hmm. it talks about transmissions of images and television signals. I can talk to you about mm -hmm. that. Okay. That's my ability. You may not have that ability, right. but we all have different abilities. And here's where we mess up. Mm -hmm. You're so busy complaining about yes. why you don't have as yes. much as this one got. Come on. This one got more favor than the other one got. And you're being jealous and immature and yes. acting stupid. Yes. When we ought to be saying, well, John, I, I don't have what you have, mm -hmm. but let me connect with you. Yes. And yes. the two of us are stronger than any one of us separately. Yes, yes. You see, and maybe in order to complete the progress, the picture of progress, maybe uh, that 70% uh, that or 60% needs to have just a little 30% more added yeah. on to it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and it, it makes it better. It does. And we can ov overcome. And when we work together on one accord in one place, that's where the miracles of God yes. begin to manifest themselves. Yes, yes, yes. We, uh, the, that spirit of cooperation, but executing, keeping the focus on executing God's plan mm -hmm. keeps us from running into the problem where Jesus says, this is what I have against you. Mm -hmm. But we have another, uh, another uh, text in John chapter 8, and we look at verses 2 through 12. And in, in that particular passage, there was the, the story of the woman 
who was caught in adultery. Okay. Right. And all of the spiritual leaders brought her uh, to Jesus and they were waiting to see what Jesus was going to say about it. What, what should they do? What should they do? And Jesus didn't do what they thought. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Lord finished writing whatever it was he was writing in the dirt, mm -hmm. he looked up at the woman and after uh, he had helped everybody else see that they were not without sin. Oh, okay. Right? And everybody had left and he looked up and he asked her, where were those who were accusing her? Mm -hmm. And they had gone and Jesus said, since there was nobody there, uh, Jesus said that he wasn't going to accuse her. But this is, this is one of the keys that I think that we miss a lot of times. Jesus said, go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Go and sin no more. Mm -hmm. Jesus did not condone the woman's sin. No, he didn't. He required that she not only seek forgiveness from God, but he also required that she change her lifestyle. <clears throat> One of the problems that people have today is we love to talk about the Lord gets me the lord knows me the lord knows who i am right mm -hmm. he does yeah but the lord also requires that we change once we've received forgiveness for sins a host of scriptures mm -hmm. the bible says i am a new creature in christ okay the bible says that we are not to yield our members to sin and and mm -hmm. unrighteousness mm -hmm. but to yield our members to righteousness those scriptures let us know that god is expecting a change from us this is how we move from the position that the uh, seven churches of asia were in uh, when they did not want to do what god wanted them to do anymore we have to be a people who know that god says execute my plan mm -hmm. right with whatever i've given you whatever i've given you mm -hmm. that's what you have mm -hmm. And also, I am expecting you to change. Be ye holy as I am holy. Uh oh. Right? Okay. Okay. Uh, God is expecting us to change. Um, was, it, was it Peter or Paul? I can't remember. I think it was Paul in, in Thessalonians where he was saying that, he, the, that we would be sanctified in our whole body, soul, and spirit. Mm -hmm. um, completely by the work of the Holy Spirit, sanctified, made holy. Wow. There was a change that God wants us to change. Why do we change? No man knows the day nor the hour. We're trying to be ready for when the Lord comes, right? That's right, that's right. We, we, have, to, we have to change, we have to change. We live in a world today, uh, Apostle, where Isaiah called it right, when in Isaiah 5 and 20, mm -hmm. he said, we live in a world where people will call good, good evil, evil, and, and evil, evil good. good. We live in that world where the Lord says in, the, in uh, Exodus chapter 20, thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. What do you hear in the news? Smash and grab. Smash and grab, those big box stores being jewelry stores. And yeah. All kind of. Folks just going in like, just because I want it, mm -hmm. and even though somebody else owns it, I'm going to take it. Mm -hmm. And it's not just isolated to one place. I mean, we got it going on in California. We got it going on in, in D.C. Mm -hmm. We got this stuff going on. People are not changing. We have um, the Bible says, again in Exodus 20, thou shalt not kill. Mm -hmm. We got all these murders going on in Chicago and in DC and even here mm -hmm. in San Angelo. There, there have been more murder more murders in San Angelo. Yeah. In the last year mm -hmm. than has been since I can't tell you when. Yeah. Um, and each year the police department releases stats mm -hmm. on the various crimes. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know car thefts and murders and uh, you name it, domestic disputes, and mm -hmm. we could go on and on. And our society 
is moving more and more into the uh, apocalyptic era, arena, or season than ever before. Mm -hmm. Even communities where you never heard of crime like this, mm -hmm. they're now experiencing it. Right. Why? Because we're in the end times. We, we, we are in the end times. I mean, and there are so many, so many things that go on where people are living contrary to the word of God. Um, go back to the word of God. We go to Leviticus 20 and 13, where the Bible talks about if a man lies with a male as with a woman, both of them has committed an abomination. Romans 1 and 26 and 27 for their women have committed an abomination because why they are doing those things that are contrary to their nature and men likewise gave up the natural relations with women and were consumed with passion for one another we have a society now where the lbgtqy agenda dominates the news mm -hmm. right we have a small portion of society that is that is pushing a particular agenda and the lifestyle, the lifestyle, not the people. I'm, I, I want to make I want to be clear on that. Yes, please, please. The, the lifestyle, the actions, not the people. God hates the lifestyle, the activities mm -hmm. um, that are going on. They are against his particular um, way of doing things. Right? And, well, when you bring that particular topic up, it brings up another uh, topic alongside it, and that is the ignorance of the church mm -hmm. to know how to minister mm -hmm. to people who are in the LGBTQ community. God loves them mm -hmm. as much as he loves us. Mm -hmm. He does not condone the behavior. Does not condone the behavior. And the Christians have got to stop turning their nose up mm -hmm. at people who are living a lifestyle that's contrary to what they believe in. Our job is not to judge. Right. That is not our job. Mm -hmm. Our job is not to spread hatred and mm -hmm. condemnation. Right. Our job is to show the error mm -hmm. of the lifestyle mm -hmm. through the word of God through the word of God and speak to them with love and guidance and wisdom through the Holy Ghost right it's not about it's not about personal opinion no it's not about any any one person in mm -hmm. my personal opinion your personal opinion mm -hmm. but what does what does God say and, and we have we have to be careful because the corrupt church that God identified in the area of Persia was mixing worldliness mm -hmm. and godliness. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, the loveless church left their first love. They, 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 they did not stay with what God had said to do. And so as the church, when we deal with this issue of thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not murder, um, the um, uh, LBG, LB, LGBTQY agenda, we have to be, we have to ask ourselves, okay, God, what is it that you say? Mm -hmm. What do you say about this? But, you know, that's not the only thing, though. No. No, and I, no. and I'm, I'm not going to stop there because when, if, we were to, if we were to stop there, people would want to point the fingers at your broadcast and mm -hmm. go, yeah, look at that. Mm -hmm. But let me let me bring up something else, and uh, something that has plagued people for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the issue of the haves and the have-nots. Oh yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We've always we've always had the issue of the haves and the have-nots. But Second Timothy three um, verses one through five says this: that in these in these last days, that people would be lovers of money, unthankful, and without self-control. Mm -hmm. in, in other words, I'm going to keep that divide between the haves and the have-nots. We, we, we have to be careful of that because um, God is not really appreciative of a selfish spirit. 
Uh, what was it about the uh, man who had... The rich man Lazarus? Uh, not, not the rich man Lazarus, but the one whose barns were full. Oh, yeah. Right? He says, I, oh, yeah, I got... Uh, my, I had this small barn. My crop is bountiful. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tear down this barn. I'm going to build a bigger barn. Yep. And then yep. I'm going to say, uh, soul, take thy knees. Yep. 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 And Jesus said he did not realize uh -huh. that his soul was required of him that night. That's right. He was not ready for God's plan. Mm -hmm. He wanted to execute his plan. But he was not <laughs> ready because he didn't think about what he could do with what God had blessed him with. Mm -hmm. Again, we get back to that thing. What can we do with what God has blessed us with? How do we use it to glorify God? How do we use it to magnify his name? I, I, I love what you're doing um, with the Gospel America Network because... Um, for many of you, and, and I know that you don't know because you don't see it all the time. I'm just going to brag a minute and then I'm going to lead us along. <laughs> okay. um, Apostle and Pastor Marcella uh, make the, the resources of the Gospel of America readily available to the community and try not only just to help promote community activities, but to help other churches um, that are in need by using this gift that God has has blessed them with unselfishly giving unselfishly giving and that's what God wants us to do is to look and see okay how can you bless others because what we don't realize is that in the law of reciprocity mm -hmm. or the or the law of the sowing and the and the harvest, the reaping and the sowing, right? Whatever you give out, you can trust that God's going to give back. So we want to be a people who are um, aware of the signs of the times. Mm -hmm. We want to be a people who are aware of what the word of God says. And we want to be a people who are thinking about how we can avoid having Jesus come one day and said, I have this against you, right? Mm -hmm. We are not looking to be caught unaware when the uh, apocalypse, the end of all things comes, when Jesus comes back again, we don't want to be caught unaware. We want to be ready uh, because we have put our hands to the gospel plow. And now that we have our hands to the gospel plow, we have to continue that work that God has given us to do. You said, you mentioned being ready. And as we, we have to be ready for the end mm -hmm. of the apocalyptic time, which will be the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, with that in mind, I'm, re I'm reminded of the story of the ten virgins. Yes. Five were wise. Yes. And five were foolish. Yes. And... It's a, it, it is an illustration of the spiritual, uh, I would say, the spiritual position mm -hmm. of people in the church today. Mm -hmm. Five wise, mm -hmm. five foolish, 50 mm percent. -hmm. Yeah. 50 percent mm -hmm. of people who go to church mm -hmm. will not make it in the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven mm -hmm. if they don't repent. Right. And so the five, the commandment was given. Mm -hmm. To have your lamps trimmed and burning mm -hmm. when the cry of the bridegroom comes. Mm -hmm. Well, they were all sleeping and slumbering, and the cry was made. Mm -hmm. I'm not that I'm trying to preach, but I got I got to have to explain this. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I love the word of God, <laughs> and so Jesus is explaining, and he's saying, the five wise ones woke up; their lamps were trimmed and burning. Yes, but the Five foolish ones woke up, mm -hmm. their lamps had gone out. Right. And they went to the wise ones and said, lend us yeah. some of your oil. Mm -hmm. And the wise virgin said, no, mm -hmm. it won't be enough for us and you. Mm -hmm. Rather go to them that sell and then come back. Yes. So they got up, they went oh, trying to get what they should already have. Mm -hmm. And while they were out getting their oil, mm -hmm. the door mm -hmm. to the marriage was opened. Mm -hmm. 
and the five wise virgins entered in, mm -hmm. and the door was shut. Mm -hmm. And this is a sad thing. Mm -hmm. The five foolish virgins come back, mm -hmm. and they're knocking. Lord, Lord, open up to us. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, depart from me. Mm -hmm. I never knew you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are people that go to church, and the question is, does God know you? Right, right. And unfortunately, we got a lot of junk food preaching going on. Mm -hmm. We give people preaching, holler and scream, and give people all that emotional stuff to make them feel good. Mm -hmm. Tickles their emotions. Yeah. And their soul is suffering from spiritual malnutrition mm. because we didn't give them the right word. Well, yeah. granted, those that don't make it in, they're going to be judged according to their works. I, I understand that. I get that. But there are people who are held accountable who did not feed those lambs That's right. the way they were supposed to. That's right. And they're going to receive, according to God's word, a greater uh, penalty, so mm -hmm. to speak. Yes. Yes. I mean, we do, we do have to be very um, mindful <laughs> of our responsibility. Uh, because when you talk about that door being shut, uh, I go back again to uh, Noah. Mm hmm because after Noah, after God called Noah and all the animals into the ark, what did he do? Shut the door. He shut the door. Mm -hmm. And then the rain came. Mm -hmm. Well, it was too late. I, I, I just, just share with anybody who's listening. Don't adopt the thought. You know, I'll wait until maybe my last breath and I'll get it right with God right before I die. Ooh, ooh. Problem is, you don't know when that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And you don't, know how, you don't know how suddenly that could happen. God has given us ample opportunity right now to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Living in this age of grace, he's given us the option of receiving Jesus and, and, and repenting of our sins and, and, and turning and, and, and having the opportunity to be a part of the family of God right now. Amen. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, you certainly can do that. And I'm glad we got time to, to, to mention this because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. Mm -hmm. No man comes unto the father, but by me. Mm -hmm. So if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven, come to Jesus. Yes. Repent of your sins. Yes. Ask God to forgive you. And guess what he said, Pastor John? He's faithful and just to forgive to us forgive. of all sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And whosoever shall come unto me, mm -hmm. I will in no wise cast out. Amen. Amen. That's, that's powerful, man. It is. That, it that's is. powerful. It is. And that's what gives us comfort to know that whenever the apocalyptic time, uh, whatever phase we're in, yes. in, that, in, in, in that dispensation, yes. We can walk through that in peace mm -hmm. and it, with the assurance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because, yes, man, God got me mm. and I'm sticking with him. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it is best to stick with a sure thing. <laughs> and we know God is a sure thing. We know yeah. God is a sure thing. Yep, yeah, he is. Um, when we think of the apocalyptic dispensation. And I'll use that. You ever read the book by uh, Clarence Larkin, mm -hmm. uh, Rightly Dividing the Word of Truth? And mm -hmm. he talks about, he goes into Daniel and tells, goes into Isaiah, and he goes into Revelation. I love what he does with Revelation. And he breaks it down and talks about the, the signs and the seasons and the times. Well, while, while all of that is, is, is great to know, the most important thing to know is to know that Jesus is your Lord. Right, right. You know, I can go into all the academia mm -hmm. of, of, of Bible seminary if I wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. But the important thing is to know, and the most simplistic thing simplistic, is Simplistic, yeah. See, Jesus was simplistic yet mm -hmm. profound. Yeah. Yes. The most yes. simplistic and profound thing about Jesus is that he made the way so plain a fool could understand mm -hmm. it. Amen. You don't have to have a PhD. Amen. You don't have to <laughs> have any other kind of degree. All you got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I am so grateful 
to what God has done. Because if it wasn't for his grace and mercy, you know, I, I would be, I was on the express train to hell. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I really was. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I didn't go to the nightclubs. I was the attraction at the nightclub. <laughs> People came to the, the <laughs> boy, back in the, in the 70s, I had my bell-bottom pants on and my platform and shoes. platform <laughs> shoes. <laughs> and my hat cocked over to the side. I thought I was something. Boy, I look like a clown. I tell you, I look, I look at that today, and I say, Lord, he, he really had to have some mercy. <laughs> and I look at that. And, th and I compare that with some of the young people today, what they wear, mm -hmm. you know, and I say, you know, you know, they, well, they don't do that no more, but they got the guys with the pants hanging down way on their backside, and you can, you can see their underwear, mm -hmm. uh, and they got the girls got, it looked like painted on clothes, man, they were so tight. And praise the Lord. Uh, everything is exposed. Just everything, because society has become, listen, this is what really gets me. I go into a, a store like Walmart or some other big store like that, and I see people walking around in their jammies. When did society get so casual <laughs> that you go to the grocery store and you just jump out of bed and just go on into the store with your jammies on? Uh, I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I, that is one of my pet peeves. And I said, well, Lord, I'm sure I had... I gave some other senior citizen a, a pet peeve <laughs> in my young day. <laughs> I think we all did. Um, no, matter, no matter how we look at it, if we take a look back over our lives, we can really be thankful for the grace of God. Yes, yes um, because, because of his grace and mercy, he spared us to get to the point where we would um, realize that we needed Jesus. Yeah. And I wonder who... He's doing that for today, you know. Is, is Jesus touching your heart right now? If he is, that little tug you feel on the inside, that's him. Mm -hmm. And he said, why don't you come to me right mm -hmm. now? Yes. In fact, I think, I think it would be good if we just prayed for some folks that are, that are watching. Amen. And I'm going to put a number on the bottom of the screen. And if you want prayer or if you want to give your life to Christ, mm -hmm. you certainly can do that. If you want somebody just to talk to or somebody that will just listen, sometimes we just got to stop talking so much and just listen. Mm -hmm. But if you want somebody to just listen to you, I want you to call that number right there at the bottom of the screen. And uh, uh, you can call us. You can email us. I'm going to send you my email address, too. And that, that email address will be copied over to Pastor Pope, too, <clears throat> so that. Because we're the kind of people, we're brothers in the Lord, Amen. and we're working together on one accord. So mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what he responds to you or whether I respond to you. What, it, what matters is that you get the right answer yes. for the question that you might have. Yes. Or that you get the right uh, answer to what you're dealing with. A lot of people are dealing, uh, dealing with uh, uh, spousal abuse. Mm -hmm. People are dealing with financial difficulties. People are dealing with anger issues yes. and they just don't know how to deal yes. with their anger. Yes. And uh, I thank the Lord for deliverance because I was one of them. Amen. And uh, uh, God blessed me. I didn't, y if y'all ever heard of PTSD, well, uh, I'm, I was diagnosed with that. And it took a long time. And it would have been shorter if I had learned to listen to the word of the Lord. But it took a long time for me to get delivered from PTSD. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And I have to st stay on a constant vigil mm -hmm. so that the enemy, I don't, what do you call it, relapse, mm -hmm. go back into it. Mm -hmm. Listen, people, we're dealing with a lot of mental health issues. Yes, we are. And, and, and people in the church have mental health issues. Yes. And they need to know that, that they can get the help that they need if they just call us. So if you're going through issues like that, if you're going through domestic abuse and uh, or just going through all kinds of financial difficulties. If we don't have the answer, we can go to somebody that does. Mm -hmm. And if you need professional counseling, I'm not a counselor, but we can certainly refer you to someone who is. Yes. And there are Christian counselors out mm -hmm. there. We got yes. the, uh, a friend out there at, uh, that does Bible counseling. He's, mm -hmm. a, he's a bona fide uh, uh, and licensed counselor. Mm -hmm. And we can refer you to there. So. See, faith without works is dead. Right. It's one thing to believe, you know, on the Lord. It's one thing to believe that God 
can help you through your ordeal. But there, there's some steps that we have to take mm -hmm. uh, to move in that direction in cooperation with God. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I just want to pray. In Amen. fact, would you, you can do that Amen. if you want. Amen. Let's pray for the viewers. And if there's anyone who needs help, that they'll get it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus. And we, first of all, want to glorify and magnify your name. Because you made this opportunity available to Heavenly Father, not just to us, but to all who are listening and watching right now. We don't know all of the situations, dear Heavenly Father, that people are dealing with. But we know a God who is able to deal with every situation. There's nothing that is above, above and beyond your ability. And so right now, dear Heavenly Father, we pray that someone who is out there, who is calling out to you, who is looking for a solution to the problem, Lord God, that you would speak to them right now in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord God, whatever the situation be, whether it be financial, physical, emotional, whatever it may be, dear Heavenly Father, we know that your arm is not waxed short. We know that there's nothing that is too hard for the Lord. And we believe, dear Lord God, that as we call on you in spirit and in truth, that you would minister to the needs of the people. We pray your blessing over them. We pray your blessing over them right now. And Lord, if there's somebody whose soul is not saved, Father God, I just pray that they would cry out to you. And for you who may not be saved but want to receive Jesus, if you would just repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you now and I ask you to forgive me of all my sins. I repent of all unrighteousness and I know that you are the son of the living God. And I pray that you would come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. If that's a prayer that they prayed, Lord God, we are thankful yes, that they have joined the family of the living yes, God. Lord. If that's a prayer that you prayed, we do believe that God has saved you, but you can't stop there. We encourage you uh, to get into a Bible believing, Bible preaching church so that you may learn to grow as a disciple of Christ and, and be who he wants you to be. Thank you, Apostle, for this, this opportunity to, to share with you. Yes, all right. You're God welcome. You. And thank you for partnering with me. Amen. Amen. Um, and tell everybody where your church is, what the name of it, and where it is, and where your services are, so if they can come if they want to go. Okay. Uh, we're Galilee Missionary Baptist Church, 721 West 19th Street, uh, here in San Angelo, Texas. Our service times, we have Bible study on Wednesday night at 6.15 p.m. We have our Sunday morning uh, Sunday school at 9 a.m. And then we have our worship hour that starts at 10. And then there are other things that we have. Uh, you can find the more, more information about us at Galilee, uh, G-A-L-I-L-E-E-S-A-T-X.com. That's our website. And we would love to have you. Um, we would love to have that opportunity to love on you. And we just pray that God will bless you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. And <clears throat> if, if you uh, would like to come and visit us over at Eagles Wings International Ministries, you're welcome to do that. We're located at 718 West Avenue Y in San Angelo. And our services start Sunday morning at 9 a.m. with Christian education. Then at 11 a.m. it's our morning worship service. Mm -hmm. And then on uh, Mondays at 8 p.m., Mondays and Tuesday at 8 p.m., we're live on Facebook with our uh, Eagle's Wings prayer line. We're praying, uh, Pastor Pope, for people. It doesn't matter whether they go to my church or not. Amen. And we're praying for the kingdom. Amen. And so we're praying for anybody that wants prayer. And let me tell you something. There's been miracles, healings, deliverances that have, been, have taken place as a result of that prayer. Amen. So join us uh, Monday and Tuesday nights, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Monday nights, yours truly is the moderator. On Tuesday nights, Elder David Harbiton is the Amen. moderator. Amen. Then on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, it's our live internet interactive Bible study where we share the Word of God at the church, but we also stream it online 
and uh, you can join us if you want to and let's study the word of God together mm -hmm. you know and you can have fun Pastor Amen. Cole in the word I love the word of God but I Amen. like to have fun with the word Amen. we Amen. make people laugh and we just <laughs> have a good time <laughs> Amen. we're serious about serving God but you don't have to be a prune face about it mm -hmm. so anyway but that those are our service times come on come on out and be with us Eagles Wings International Ministries. Sometimes we call it the Internet Eagles Wings International Worship Center. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Seven Eighteen West Avenue Y in San Angelo. Come on out and be with us, and uh, I think you'll have a good time, and definitely you will grow in your walk with Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, praise Amen. God. Amen. Well, I think we're just about out of time. Yes, sir. Uh, and uh, any last moments? Any last words you want to say? Uh, I, I just just remember this: Be ye also ready. Because mm -hmm. no man knows the day nor the hour. If you just focus on being ready for the Lord's return, you don't have to worry about what's going to happen in the future because yeah. God will take care of you. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's called peace of mind mm -hmm. and assurance of everlasting life. Well, on behalf of Pastor John Pope from Galilee Missionary Baptist Church and yours truly, Gary Jenkins at Eagle's Wings, you're watching The Sword Amen. where we take the Word of God and apply it to the issues and the topics in society today. God bless you, everybody. Bye-bye. God bless. Streaming worldwide, this is the Gospel America Television Network.